the purpose of Wealth Talk is to educate, inform, and hopefully entertain you on the subject of building your wealth. Wealth Builders recommends you should always take independent financial, tax, or legal advice before making any decisions around your finances. Welcome to episode 59 of Wealth Talk. My name is Christian Rodwell, the Membership Director for Wealth Builders, and I'm joined today by our founder, Mr. Kevin Whelan. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Chris. Good to talk to you again. I don't know what day of the week it is, but there you go. That's what it's happening like. All the days are merging into one another, but I'm sure we'll give some good content today. Revisiting today, a topic that we first covered back in February last year, 2019. So it was episode four when we originally unveiled the debits process, which is how to uncover hidden money in your life. And we felt that it's good time now to revisit that. It's always good to do an annual kind of stock take of these things anyway, isn't it, Kevin? Uh, It's always important to do reviews um, because whenever you're on a wealth building journey, you're in a moving place, you know, you create momentum and therefore things change. And of course, nothing is further from realisation now that, you know, things have changed dramatically, haven't they? We have an unprecedented set of circumstances and concept of debits, Chris, which is one of uh, my acronyms that I frequently use. I've got many of them, which helps to teach the concept. It's how do you uncover hidden wealth in your life? How do you stop leaks? How do you create money out of thin air And then how do you deploy that money in ways that will help you build your wealth or eliminate debt if you've still got some debts hanging around in your life? So that's what debits are. And they stand for debt, education, bills, insurance, tax, and support costs, hence debits. However, in episode, what was it, four, Chris? Right, they'll all be spelled out. So I'm not Sure. Do you want me to go into them all again? I would say anyone who didn't catch an episode can rewind back and catch that. Um, because there's a kind of refreshed version that we want to go through today, isn't there, almost, based on current environment conditions? Yeah, I'll make some observations rather than do the whole thing, Chris, because that's a, a podcast in itself, isn't it, really? But when it, when you look at doing something on review... Uh, these are the things that just have to be done, sensible to do, and just do them once a year. And actually pick a day that works, you know, and do it once a year on the same day. That way, you know, you, you've almost got yourself, a, you know, you've eaten your frog. You, you know you're going to do it. And whatever your wealth dynamic is, whether you love to do detail or you hate to do detail, you know, somebody in your family working with you should be doing this. So first of all, you know, uh, the D stands for debt. And these are things you can do yourself. And, you know, we're at a place now, Chris, where we've never had interest rates as low. Uh, so we're in a place where our debt costs in mortgages and other costs uh, would have gone down. So there's an opportunity, if you're paying less now than you were before, to either pay the same as you were paying, in other words, to accelerate the elimination of debt. And I'm talking mostly about consumer debt primarily because the average interest rate is so high. Even though interest rates generally are low, credit card interest rates are still around 20% on average. So for those who are listening who've got some form of consumer debt, you know, if you've got a mortgage as well and your mortgage costs have gone down, you can redirect some of the saving, uh, which is always important to do, redirect and, and start to eliminate that consumer debt. And then once that debt is gone, then of course, or once you've reduced it, then, you know, that cost has gone down, hasn't it? So you're spending less every month. And then again, if you carry on paying what you were paying before or taking a little bit out for yourself to enjoy your life if uh, you need to do that, but keep focusing on the elimination of debt because debt is a killer for wealth. I'm not going to talk here about leverage debt, Chris. That's not the purpose of today's podcast. So we're not talking about good debt. We're only here talking about bad debt, and that's mostly in the world of consumer debt, credit cards, loans, overdrafts, the sort of things that usually pay handsomely to those who provide them, but do you a great disservice while you still got them. And don't forget, those of you who are playing the interest-free game, that game will come to an end at some point. So uh, getting a handle on that. And of course, Chris, I've written a book on 
the elimination of debt, haven't I? So we can make that available, can't we? Yeah, it's called Save a Fortune Fast, and uh, I'll absolutely put a link to that in today's show notes. Yeah, happy for anybody to have a free copy of that because it's all part of, we've all got a bit more time at home, haven't we? So reading something that might stimulate a thought that might help you on your wealth plan. And what elimination of debt does, Chris, is removes a break or plugs a leak, whatever analogy you want to use. Uh, But that's the D, that's D for debt. Now, I won't talk about education specifically, but I will talk about bills, which is the B in debits. And we've all got bills, haven't we? And once a year, you know, you can take stock and have a fresh look uh, because there's always new technology, new search engines, new ways that you can drive a little bit more value to help you reduce that. Maybe not eliminate your bills, of course, but certainly reduce them. And I think one of the important things in the COVID period where we're in unprecedented times, rather than reduce, there's an opportunity to pause. See that what I did there? Just a little pause there. You can pause something that you don't need in the short term. You might want to have it in your life in the medium term, but you might want to pause it in the short term. Do you want a couple of examples of that, Chris? And Why not? That would be good. Well, do I, I'll give you a couple I've done. Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, I'm a mad, mad football fan and completely crazy because I support a terrible team, which is Newcastle United. So I'm never very happy, but but I love watching football and my uh, boys who live with me do as well. Um, they're both Newcastle United fans as well. I've infected them, unfortunately, with the virus. And um, anyway, we paused our Sky TV for Sky Sports, which just means we've reduced some costs, not that we were desperate to reduce the cost, but it just made sense to do that. You see what I mean? So you're just not paying that for the duration while there is no football on TV. And some people have cancelled their skies altogether because they're finding their kids are watching things on Netflix or watching things in other ways. So take stock of things like TV, have a little look. Um, Also, I'm not driving my car at the minute, Chris. So uh, the tax was was due, um, coincidentally, around the end of March. So what I did was I sawned my car. You know what sawn is, Chris? Uh, I do. It's just sort of temporarily off-road. Yeah, it's called a statutory off-road notice. So you drop a little note online, just did it online, to the tax office to say, my car is no longer on the highways and the byways it's parked on my drive. It ain't going anywhere. And uh, therefore, um, I'm not going to pay my tax. And that's perfectly fine. And you can reclaim tax if you've kind of paid it in advance, if you see what I mean. And then you saw it, then you can get the tax back for that period of time. Um, so there's a couple of examples, but other things um, I've done also, I've had a uh, reduction in my rent, negotiated a rent reduction from my business landlord uh, for my uh, one of my offices, which is a 20% reduction. Um, nice reduction. Uh, he was happy with that because, you know, recognized we actually weren't going in there. And um, you can also reduce things like um, insurance, you know, so if you're not, if you don't need something for a period of time, you know, you can often either renegotiate or get a better deal um, on those sort of things. So, so the whole point is if we've got more time at home, why not take one of those days and go and look at your bills? And we find in our membership group, Chris, that we kind of encourage them all to do it together, don't we? So they can kind of compare notes and compare savings. You know, people are, are an average saving two to three hundred pounds a month. Um, and if you can save that, now that's when they did it first time, maybe second time around might be 30, 40, 50. But whatever you're saving. Remember that whatever you save from bills, you've just found yourself a wealth building seed that you can now plant that and do something with that. Either, as I said earlier on, use it to eliminate something that you don't want anymore, like debt, or you can invest it in something else that helps build your wealth. And there are three things that I would normally suggest people do if they find some money Uh, to help them build their wealth. Shall I touch on those, Chris? Please do. I think I might know one. Go on then. Premium bonds? 
Yes, I love a premium bond, especially if you only save a few quid, you know, 25 quid gets you a premium bond. I mean, interest rates are so low, you're not going to get any uh, real return, which is why it's better to pay off debt. But if, uh, you know, I like my premium bonds and uh, it's nice, easy liquidity and um, it's good. And all my family actually pretty much maxed out on their premium bonds and um, it allows us to get some tax-free prizes. And, you know, we haven't won the million yet, but uh, you know, somebody will one day. At least I'm glad everybody is participating in it. So that's one. Number two is it's never been cheaper, really, Chris, to buy low-cost tracker funds or ETFs, exchange-traded funds. You can buy tracker funds and invest in the market. Don't worry about the timing of the market. It's just investing. You're just building something. And frankly, volatility works for you when you're investing in the market month by month because when markets fall, you're buying more more units in the fund, say, whatever fund you choose. Uh, you normally buy more units. And then when they go back up, you carry forward all of those units to help you build your wealth. So it's kind of compounding the benefit within some form of tracker or ETFs. And I think we'll be probably doing a special podcast on low-cost investing, Chris, in the coming weeks. I would think so, yes. Yeah, I think there's a good opportunity there. And and I think the third one, Chris, is, is to redirect some of that money to poise yourself and get ready. What I mean by that is we go back now to the E in debits, uh, which is education. Education is the cornerstone of all wealth building. And those who followed our podcast a bit, Chris, will know that the E is the very first step in the wheel of wealth. And if you save money, why not redirect some of that money to help either pay for support or pay for education that's going to get you ready to take advantage of the opportunities that arise? Does that make sense? It sure does. Uh, now, the other parts of debits, I think the I, the T, and the S, which is insurance, it's tax, and it's support costs. Um, generally, what I mean by that is some form of professional-related service. So I is insurance, T is for tax, and S is paying professionals who are supporting you on your journey. Um, and therefore, usually, you need a little bit of expertise to help you profit and maximize from those things. Definitely insurance, a great broker can help you minimize your insurance costs. Um, actually, there's a whole take on insurance we've got in Wealth Builders, Chris, that we might cover on another day. But certainly, one of the big ones for us and definitely within our Wealth Builder group is because all wealth building comes from a place of entrepreneurial thought. All of our wealth building members in the end become entrepreneurs. And if you're an entrepreneur and a business owner, then you can get tax relief on your life cover. So you're covering both tax and insurance in one go and often get a 50% reduction in your cost. So if you get a 50% reduction in your cost, you can either get more cover because actually you needed more cover because you didn't buy the right cover or you've saved money and then you just go back to plan A, which is redirect that money somewhere else. All right. And then in support costs, it's who are you paying? You know, are you paying advisors? Are you paying professionals? Maybe take this opportunity to go back and renegotiate. So if you've got an IFA and they're providing good value, um, then you can, you're happy just to acknowledge that. If they're not providing, providing the value you want, either renegotiate or switch where you can design your own portfolio. And we can help give you the basic lessons anyway, where you can design your own portfolio and um, pay a fraction of the cost. So if you're investing in the market, generally speaking, the best way to do that, certainly our view, and that's generally our view, not giving advice to anybody, Chris, is to hold passives, hold things low cost, because the cost is the only thing you can really control in the market. You can't control what the market does. And therefore, there are a whole bunch of ways you can save money. We call it the CPR, don't we, Chris? We do. Charges, performance, and risk. That's it. So we offer to review for uh, those people who engage with us uh, the charges they're paying against the performance they're getting, against the risk that they're taking. And more often than not, there's a positive impact by reviewing and then doing. And that's the whole thing. Same as if you go in on a website and review your utility bills. You know, you look, you review, then you do. Um, and then when you take action on many things, you're compounding 
upon compounding, about compounding. And taking these small steps, Chris, is what it takes to build wealth. There's not just one magic bullet, one get-rich-quick scheme. It's taking small individual steps. Now, we know you cannot save your way to wealth. We're not saying that. We're not telling people to penny pinch. We're not telling people to, to budget. We're just saying, well, you've got something that's already important to you in your life. Can you reduce it? Can you eliminate it? Can you pause or freeze it? And if you can do that, share what you do so that other people can learn the lessons from you. You might have found something unique that you found, but certainly join the free Wealth Builder site and you'll see loads of things that people are doing. Is that helpful, Chris? That's very helpful. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing in that all of our members of Seven Steps to Wealth program will be reviewing their debits very, very soon. So inside of the Facebook community, I'm sure there'll be many, many people sharing some things that we perhaps had not thought about or discussed to mention today. So um, anyone anyone who's listening now who goes through the process and has a good saving, please do share with us in the Facebook group. And, then and, and just, to- uh, just a quick thought, Chris, you know, as well, two thoughts, actually. One is we're all different wealth dynamics. Again, people who have been following us, we know we're, we're huge fans of wealth dynamics because it gives you that sort of compass point about where you should be building your wealth, what, what's your natural state of flow, where's your line of least resistance to build your wealth. And some people are going to love this, aren't they? The people who are detail-oriented, love a spreadsheet, love recording these things and get pleasure from it. And and those who are more creative, more big-picture thinkers probably don't like doing it at all. But that's the point. You know, you can use other people to do this. And one of the greatest sources in my life for finding savings and opportunities, Chris, is my kids, you know? So my, my um, two of my, my uh, lads who live at home, one's 25, uh, doing his post-grad law degree, one's 22, and he's a surveyor, so he's into detail. You know, you get them to do stuff, and, and you give them some value, you know? <laughs> it can be a takeaway these days, um, you know, to do something that saves money for the family. But they know they're contributing to the overall wealth of the family by doing their part because that's what they're good at. And another one of my sons just loves, you know, selling stuff. So I always say, you know, if you can, uh, especially in a time when you're more at home, have a look at some things you've got in your home and declutter your life. And if you declutter, you can sell that stuff online, get one of your kids to do it and they do it. You can give them a reward, whatever age your kids are, whether they're, you know, seven or 17, it doesn't really matter. You can get your kids involved and get them to kind of buy into the idea that you as a family are trying to, you know, save some money and then build up that money. And of course, you can buy them premium bonds or buy, put a, put a pension contribution for them so that, you know, they, they get a good start when they're getting to adulthood or whatever it would be. You know, there's just a whole bunch of fun ideas you can engage on something that sounds pretty dry, pretty dreary, saving money. But it can be fun, Chris, and it can absolutely accelerate you on your wealth and make you feel proud you're taking little steps. That's it. And one of the values there in the Declaration of Independence, sharing the knowledge and the lessons we've learned along the way. So why not start at home with those lessons? Cool. Good stuff. Okay, so thanks for listening today. And you touched on it earlier, Kevin, but I think we're going to be bringing in some of our experts to give their views on individual pillars as to kind of what the bounce back after COVID might look like. So that's something to be looking forward to very soon. Yeah, absolutely. There'll be, uh, I think we're lining them up, aren't we? You know, those who can help us bounce back in the the stock market, uh, those with very specific views about how we can get ready and take advantage of opportunities that inevitably will come in property. And most certainly there'll be opportunities for businesses to pivot and and reinvent themselves. And just as we've been doing, uh, we've done so many Zoom calls, haven't we, uh, Chris, and doing all the Zoom calls with our members as well and and using the technology like you introduced with the mind maps, which was spectacularly uh, brilliant and was very well received. So thank you for doing that. Uh, Again, just evidence of things a different wealth dynamics at work, Chris. You know, that's something that I'm proud that you bring to the table. Um, you know, and I specialize much more on kind of the old fashioned IP on on how to make the numbers work so people can create their wealth with the ideas, but then the application of technology. Teamwork makes the dream work, as they say. <laughs> so they say. <laughs> 
All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. And Kevin, I'll catch you on a future episode of Wealth Talk. Until next time, Chris. See ya. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget that we are constantly updating our resources inside the Wealth Builders membership site to help you create, build and protect your wealth. Head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership right now for free access. That's wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership. 